Welcome back everybody. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a little fabricating. And the reason is, uh, on the 95 Nissan again, reason is <clears throat> when I bought the truck, speedometer didn't work. And, or I should say it worked erratically. Um, when you were doing 50, it said you were doing 100 and it was pegged. If you were going in reverse, it said you were doing 30 forward. Um, and it just, I tried to fix it and it just never did work. I put in a new speed sensor. Uh, you might have seen that video where I'd take the broken one out and it never worked. So I ordered uh, two more entire instrument clusters from Salvage Yards and everything always worked except the speedometer. And I don't know if you can see this, but I removed the speedometer out of this cluster so that I could install it in the truck and I could make tests. So with the key on, with the engine running, I had 14 volts here. I had a good ground. I had varying signal from the speed sensors. And so I knew I was getting everything up to this point through all of the connectors. The speedometers just were not functioning. And I guess this is a real common problem. Um, and I'm tired of, I mean, I would love to have the original speedometer because I really need an odometer. But, um, you know, I, I need to get this truck on the road where I can start actually benefiting from it. And until I can find uh, a replacement or, you know, pay $200 for an aftermarket that is actually pretty accurate, um, I'm going to go another route just so I can get this vehicle in use. And so what I found was this little speedometer here. And I've already disassembled it. But uh, it comes to you in this little package here. Kind of looks like an old uh, tachometer that we used to put on the old muscle cars on the dash or under the dash. But what this is... It's a GPS uh, speedometer. So it uses GPS satellites to give your speed. Um, it has about eight different functions, different looks and everything. It, it has a, a and B trip odometer. Um, it can show you time driven uh, in that trip. Uh, it, it knows at least right now anyway, supposedly, it knows the speed limit on the highways you are traveling. So if you go over that speed limit by a certain amount, it will turn red and a little alarm will go off. I mean, there's all different kinds of functions on it that I don't really need. Um, I mainly just need a speedometer. And yes, I, the trip odometer would come in handy uh, so that I can keep track of the mileage for oil change and timing belt purposes. But right now, I mainly just need a speedometer. So, um, got this online. I'm not going to say where because uh, they're, they're kind of torquing me off. But anyway, one of those places that everybody gets stuff from. And it was less than $30. And if I can get this sandwiched into that dash cluster, at least where it's functional, then I can start driving this truck. Um, but... I have to get this into this space. Um, and that ain't gonna happen in its current configuration. So I took it apart. And when you take it apart, really, there's not that much to this. Just like all electronics, it's been completely miniaturized. And so what we have is that and that is a very small package runs off a USB so you need 5 volt um, to run it and then this is just the front of the lens that actually makes all these LEDs make some kind of sense and I can show you let me run and get a battery real fast uh, and I can plug this in and show you what it looks like. I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back. 
So here we've got a brick, a charging brick. I will plug this in with a USB cord and I can show you what this actually looks like. It won't give any speed or anything, especially here in the house um, because it needs to communicate with satellites. But, so there's what we've got. Um, there's a little deal on the top. You rotate it left or right or push it in to do several functions. So you can rotate it. Oh, I guess I just moved the cord just a little bit. Let me see. There we go. Didn't have it plugged in very good. So anyway, you can move it. You can change the look of it. You can change what it shows. There's a clock. Uh, I think that is uh, time driven. There's your A and B trip odometer, which I don't know how high it counts. Probably not real high. You can talk, that's pushing it in. You can toggle it on and off, basically. Oh, that's altitude. 587 is the altitude. Um, it also tells you direction you're traveling. So anyway, now, uh, I'm trying to get it back to where I was at, but that doesn't really matter right now. Anyway, um, now obviously you have to have clear view of satellites for this to work. So it won't work in parking garages, it won't work in tunnels, it won't work inside buildings, especially that have metal roofing, siding, whatever. Um, and it times out, so it turns itself off if there's no movement. Uh, so anyway, I have to get this into that well and I want to be able to put the bezel and everything back on, the lens back on and everything. And so that is what today's project is. Now, you can't run this off a of 12 volt. It has to run off a of 5 volt. And the easiest way to do it is with a USB cord. Now, I have this cord right here. Um, it would be better if, if I had a shorter cord, which sometimes uh, earbuds, flashlights, Bluetooth speakers, things like that come with a little bitty short cord. And I know I've got some around here, but I have not found them yet. This is the shortest cord right here, and that's what I'm going to use for now. Uh, so anyway, USB, 5 volts. We need to turn 12 volt into 5 volt, and it needs to be pretty fairly regulated. So this is a real cheapy, it's a cigarette lighter to USB power port. Uh, you can buy these just about anywhere. I actually have some better ones that I got from Dollar General. So uh, the plan is to open this up, take whatever circuit board in here is out, uh, try to put it in here somewhere, wire it up, plug in the cord to it, plug in the cord to the speedometer, and then get that all to fit in here where it functions and looks halfway decent. That's the goal for today. So I'm gonna get started. First, I'm gonna take this apart and see what we have to work with inside this adapter. So you pop the top off. There's a fuse almost always in these. Sometimes they unscrew. This one, I'm gonna have to remove this ring. Pretty sure. And then now I think it just pops apart. I'm not super worried about the plastic or anything because I'm not using it. I just want the circuit board. Yeah, tiny little circuit board. So the spring is one contact. It'll be 12 volt positive. And these here, or this black wire, is gonna be your ground. So we don't need that. Put it in the trash. We don't need that. I might save the spring. Throw it in the garbage. Okay, so there's what we have to work with. Now, I don't want to break this off because it's already hooked up. I can use that. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clip it short. Okay. So now I have positive, negative. And all I have to do is put that inside. Well, I guess we're putting a new connector on that one. Uh, so all I have to do is put this somewhere up inside, out of the way. And uh, even, even with the speedometer mounted somewhere, and actually right down there in the bottom would be just about ideal if I can pull that off because this wire can go right under that screw and this wire can go right under that screw. And then we have our 12 volt to five volt power right there. The, the variable signal from the speed sensor, we don't need because remember this is GPS. Um, it's in there. Ah, nothing, twist tie. Uh, okay, so. In order to put this in here, what my plan was is to use the, the existing bezel that came with it, um, but the way this is shaped, it's actually shaped in the opposite direction. So it is thinner here and bigger here than what was original. I think I can turn it around like this and mount it like this where uh, the speedometer basically sits flush with the back of this, which will sit flush uh, with the back of this bezel, and it will look like that. And then, when that is all in there, this will roughly sit, you know, back into place, and it'll all look good. Um, and guys... If you get fingerprints on these, you can't hardly clean them off. So you got to be careful. If you don't want to see a smudgy, greasy fingerprint on your dash forever, try not to touch it. But that is the goal. So in order to do that, I got to make a filler plate for all this space around right there. And that is what this piece here is going to be for. Um, got this out of my junk pile. This was the base to an electric heater. And I don't know if you can see that right there. It tells you the kind of plastic it is. And it says ABS. So ABS plastic is what they put in vehicles. This is the exact right kind of plastic to use in a vehicle that's going to get hot in the summer, cold in the winter. Um, I've already made some rough scratches uh, scribed around the pieces where I want to cut it. And so, uh, that's what I need to do is cut this out, make it, cut a hole out in the center for this to fit in, uh, fairly snug, mount this into there. So it's just, it's just a little bit of fabrication and stuff. Um, so I'm going to get to,
All right, I think that's pretty close. Um, I've got a few gaps in here, of course, considering the way I had to make that hole, that's not uh, surprising. Um, I think what I'm gonna do actually is silicone this into place because I've got a bunch of black RTV out in the garage and I can silicone in these gaps and in the back of here that way none of the light shines through when you have your headlights on and silicone uh, it's high temp it's oil resistant and everything uh, and it'll work good plus that will let me if I actually had to it'll let me take it back apart so I could pull that out of here and use it for something else um, so I think I'm going to go do that and All right, guys, there it is. Now all I have to do is let the silicone set up. I know it's kind of ugly looking there, but you'll never see that. And then 
hook up the cable, tuck the cable away, snap it all back together, and hopefully everything will fit in nice and neat, and then all I have to do is reinstall it. Okay, it's been a few hours. The silicone is not completely set up, but it's getting pretty close. The deeper pockets are still a little soft, but it's okay. Um, so I've got my cable hooked up in both places. I had to uh, clear out the back of this, which doesn't really hurt anything. Uh, and I just used a step bit, went through there. Uh, the reason being, this sticks out so far that when you snap it back together, it would have bent it one way or the other. And I don't want to have problems on that circuit board. So that will just give me just a little bit of extra clearance. And if I ever had to go back with a factory uh, speedometer, it doesn't matter. I could just tape over that or even just take a little disc of plastic and just glue right over that, silicone it or whatever. So I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. Um, so at this point, I need to just tidy up the wires and uh, tuck everything back in and snap it back together. So that's where I'm at. Just left a fingerprint right there. Oh well. Well, anyway, it is together. This one here is not wanting to latch either. Uh, oh, it's actually broke off, that's why. But all in all, that is pretty good. Um, it looks like right here, that tapered bezel is right behind the plastic, clear plastic. So that worked out pretty good. It could have actually been pushed back in just a little further, um, but that seemed to work out pretty good. I think I might go ahead and polish this up just a little bit. But other than that, what's left is installing it. This is Meguiar's and it's called Plastex. I've had this bottle for years. It lasts for a long time for plastic. Um, you guys probably can't see it, but somebody has cleaned this like this in circular motion. And so when you look at it, it's got all these swirly scratches in it. They're not super bad, but hey, while I've got this out, I might as well do some work on it. You know, it's not like there's anything on TV or anything really going on. So, why not, you know? Now, you want to stay...
got? Looks like more fingerprints on the inside. But all in all, that's not too bad. If you guys can see that. Like I said, this is a 95 model truck. You can't expect everything to be perfect. Got a fingerprint right there. We got one right there. To come. All right, so I pulled the instrument cluster back out, took it back in the house, popped it back apart. And what I found was when I was tightening down the screw on the cigarette lighter to USB adapter, it twisted the spring and it actually broke the connection on the little circuit board. So I ended up just prying it back out and soldering on a couple of wires and then soldering them to the little U-shaped nuts that were on there. And that way, uh, when I tightened it down and everything, I was guaranteed to make good connection and it wasn't um, gonna twist around or anything. While I was in there, I went ahead and cleaned the fingerprints just a little bit, just because I already had to take it apart. So, one more time. Let's see if we've got power now. And there she is. So, now we have to take it down the road, see if it actually works. Uh, problem is, with that GPS flashing right there, that means it hasn't acquired satellites yet. So, we have to let it acquire the satellites. Yeah. Let's go over by the gate. I gotta unlock it anyway. So I'm gonna let that acquire, and then I'll get back with you. All right, so it says we have satellites acquired. Let's go down the road just a little bit. I don't have any tags on this vehicle, so we can't do much. like we got a little bleed over on the light so I may have to pop it back apart and see if it needs to be pushed together tighter because we shouldn't have that it didn't have it before I took it apart so but other than that it seems to be functioning about all the turning and back and forth and everything but like I said can't go very far and this is small town oh there she straightened out wonder what the deal was with that also speed limit is really 15 right here small town streets you know
and they're very narrow. So when you're meeting other traffic, which of course now that I'm driving, there's cars everywhere. Looks like it's working. All right. I finally at least have an idea of how fast I'm going. guys that may not be how you want to do it but that's how I did it 